Jason Chang is Director of Strategy and Business Development at Jones Lang LaSalle and Jason's had quite a bit of experience in terms of organisational structures and implementation of new processes. Jason, can I ask you to describe some of the changes you've been implementing at Jones Lang LaSalle? Jones Lang LaSalle is a very fast growing company uh, in China. Um, the retail business has only been developed uh, within the last five years. Um, uh, as any business would develop, uh, the primary focus in the beginning will be on the business side of it. Um, as the business grows to a certain size, uh, then you have to uh, put more concerns and more emphasis on other aspects of the supporting, the structure, uh, the management of the business. Um, since uh, we started uh, maybe five years ago, uh, we have grown to a certain size of many folds uh, compared to how we started before. Uh, the company size and also the headcounts uh, for the company has also grown quite a bit. Um, therefore, um, I'm hired uh, at for Johnson Excel to uh, execute and implement a platform that would structure the management of the company, of the retail side, and also um, to uh, uh, make the operation more standardized and more efficient. With the changes you've just described occurring at Jones Lang LaSalle, I would imagine that some staff will have significant resistance to the change. How do you detect that resistance from staff? Uh -huh. um, absolutely. I think um, I work in the States when I uh, got out of college and the working environment in the States and here is actually quite different. Um, I think the compliance level um, in Asia, well, I'm sorry, in China, is uh, quite different uh, than maybe in uh, Western uh, countries. Uh, the, one of the biggest challenge I have is not really the uh, design of the platform, but to how to implement, how to execute a platform where we have a uh, uh, higher level of compliance and buy-ins from all the departments and all the operators. Jason, if you do detect resistance from staff, how might you attempt to overcome that? Um, I think the important thing is to not only look at it from a management point of view, but also looking from a, um, a staff's uh, point of view. Um, I think in China in general, um, the management style have to be a lot more people focused rather than structure focused. Uh, if you come into this market, and uh, design a platform and it would only work if the compliance level is very high, then I think the successfulness of this platform will be, uh, uh, will be in doubt. Um, therefore, you have to take that into heavily uh, consideration. When you're deciding on strategic directions, do you have a particular model or framework in mind? Uh, yes. Um, I think in a lot of different, it depends on the type of business uh, you're implementing. Um, but um, in, in a way, so to speak, some of the operator will say, will think, what's in it for me? So I think it's important to come from their point of view. Uh, the platform should give them something that they need, as well as ask them to contribute certain things for the benefit of everybody else. Uh, it's hard to have one sided without the other side. Uh, so I think it's important to find balance between the two. Management theory refers to different tools for data gathering when making decisions such as force field analysis or brainstorming. Are there any particular tools that you use when deciding how to proceed with strategy? Um, I think it is important to have uh, data. Uh, from uh, my experience as a strategy uh, analyst or um, director, um, I've noticed that uh, our common sense is about 80% correct. The other 20% we're usually way off because we think certain things will happen because of a certain way, uh, but in reality, if you look at the actual figures, it doesn't. And it is that 20% of variance that we try to discover in every business, in every uh, uh, organization, uh, to try to identify these 20% and see what we can do to improve the situation. In the West, it would be quite acceptable and common for someone like yourself to hold a meeting with staff to brainstorm some ideas and come up with some solutions. Is that approach applicable here in Beijing? Yes, it is. Um, however, in the uh, discussion forum, the, uh, the atmosphere is a little bit different uh, in China. 
uh, people are less outspoken. Uh, therefore, you need to uh, find ways to encourage them to speak what's on their mind and also uh, to encourage an environment or a practice where everybody, when they come into a meeting room, they're free to say things without feeling um, the, uh, the obligation of not offending somebody else. How do you create an environment where staff can feel comfortable to make comments, particularly when there may be more senior people in the room with them? That is a very difficult part. Um, unfortunately, it is something that uh, is more uh, focused on the atmosphere and how you approach people, how you talk to people, than a, a structured way of oh, this is where you do things and how you do this. So it's more people uh, uh, encouragement and uh, more on their uh, emotional level rather than on a structural level. Can you comment on the importance of structure on the success, or otherwise, of a change process? I guess uh, when you are uh, designing a new structure or implementing a structural change, um, I think depends on what you're really implementing. Uh, I don't know if I have a general statement and what to do in a general situation like this. It really depends on what, uh, what is the structural change you're trying to, uh, imp uh, to implement. Jason, organization structure theory suggests that there may be a most suitable structure for a particular organizational situation, but I wonder if that works in practice. Can you comment on that? From my working experience in different organizations, I realize that even within the same business, same, uh, probably two are very competitive with one another, they have different uh, ways of management styles and how they uh, construct the business. Um, that is a lot due to personality differences and also the company culture. Um, and you have to understand that and maybe sometime work with that instead of trying to change the whole company's culture. Uh, because I think uh, with the world the way it is today, where you have a lot of international players uh, in all different countries, certain way of management style will work well in certain countries and certain ways will not. So uh, I think the, there's no one right solution. Um, even within the same industry, there's a different way of you know, operating successful businesses. So uh, it really depends on the, the company culture and what you have to work with. I think that's very important. If an organization has a very rigid structure, does that inhibit cultural change? The company's growth in China. Uh, because I think in general, Chinese culture is very different than the Western culture. There are certain things they would really welcome in China because this is something that's new to them, something they welcome. But there are other things that uh, may not fit the uh, Chinese uh, culture or Chinese taste, so to speak. Um, therefore, the way you operate your business have to tailor, um, you know, maybe uh, certain things you want to be very original, certain things you want to be very localized. If there are multiple structures within the one organization, does that create difficulties for communication or cultural change? Absolutely. I think the, you know, there's always an a, a, a ongoing debate which is a better structure, a hierarchical or a flat structure. I think it really depends on, the, um, even within the same business line, it depends on which department you're in. Uh, may, some may require very flat, some may require very uh, um, a hierarchical uh, structure and uh, I think the application of it would depend on to what you're trying to achieve. Uh, for instance, uh, in an accounting um, department, you probably have a very flat structure, uh, but in a department where you have more um, strategic and um, more communication, you probably have a different kind of structure. Jason, you've worked in various countries around the world. In your experience, do you think there's a particular structure that dominates here within China? I, I would think that uh, in China, usually is more flatter um, structure in management style, uh, simply because there's more managers in any organization than other companies. And uh, therefore, and there's more people. So uh, t you have a, a flatter in order to uh, to cut down the communication level that's required um, and you're going to have a meeting with uh, everybody at the same time. Jason, previously you worked with B&Q in China. Can you describe how you gathered data in that organization and how you used it to create change? 
Okay. Um, B and Q, of course, is a very large uh, retail organization. Uh, like any other company in this class, uh, its whole operations is built on a very sound, very solid uh, operating platform. Uh, we have a very sophisticated uh, analysis system, and also uh, we record all the transactions uh, from all the stores. Uh, from that transact, from those transactions, uh, we gather information from uh, whether or not uh, it, the transaction was completed at eight o'clock a.m. or two p.m., and also what type of product they buy. Uh, from that, we will gather and uh, process that data and to see what kind of uh, purchasing that's required for each of the departments and each of the products. Uh, we have roughly about anywhere from 20,000 to 50,000 products uh, SKUs uh, per store. So it's a massive uh, uh, data that needs to be processed every day. Um, uh, from CT to CT is very different uh, because sometimes it's due to weather difference, sometimes due to regional differences. So uh, there's a lot of different practice we, that we have to deploy uh, for each region. And uh, we, from that sales uh, revenue analysis, we also will adjust our headcounts and uh, operational uh, workforce to um, uh, work accordingly. So in fact, the organizational structure and indeed size is somewhat driven by the analysis of that data. Oh, absolutely. Uh, we, we produce these reports on a daily basis and we meet uh, every Monday to discuss all the details. And I believe, uh, I mean, there is a lot of detail to discuss, um, including um, logistics of all the products, uh, including uh, what's coming for uh, of next week, and also the seasonal promotion that needs to be planned in advance. Jason, I guess by looking at that data, you're undertaking, in a sense, a form of gap analysis, which will help you to decide what's not working optimally and therefore how to change. Absolutely. And also one advantage from comparing these data is that uh, one store may think it is best way to operate a certain way. Uh, without uh, these actual data, it's really hard to convince the uh, store managers to operate a certain way. Um, like I said uh, earlier, I think 80% 80 80 of our common sense is probably correct of our experience, but the other 20% need to be really analyzed and be uh, supported by hard uh, evidence and facts. Uh, these are the 20% that will make a difference in the business. That information is obviously very powerful for the organization and probably commercially sensitive. Given that, to what extent is the information available to all employees of the organization? Uh, it is not. Uh, it is usually known at store manager level, um, and we will release uh, uh, a lot of very important relevant information to all the store uh, managers so they are aware of what is going on uh, in other stores as well. So they can use that data to improve the performance and the revenue sales of the, its own store. Knowledge management theory suggests that you more, the more you share the information with employees, the more likely they are to subscribe to the ideas and the change processes. But then, of course, there's the issue of commercial sensitivity. Is there a problem striking a balance between those two imperatives? Um, actually, that is not a uh, big challenge because uh, there are certain information that's, you know, um, like for instance, sales revenue. Uh, that is something that we. Uh, we release to all employees. Uh, they want to know, everybody wants to know what is the performance of their department or the whole store. Uh, this is a definitely a, uh, a uh, revenue driving uh, tool that uh, we can put in place for all the stores. Um, of course, on the cost side, it's very obvious that we don't release any information on the cost. So actually, the, the, the distinguish the line that you draw is very clear, very easy to define. Jason, how do employees access the information that you've made available for them? Okay, um, all the data is processed through a, uh, a central CP, uh, I mean central unit, and then the information is collected from all the regions into a central computer. And then from that uh, raw data, we would uh, uh, we have actually business intelligence uh, specialists that will analyze these data and process them, and then make them into reports. Uh, there's different level of reports for uh, CEO down to the store managers. 
So uh, it depends on the, the level, uh, you may want to look at different things. Uh, on the store manager level, obviously, we would like to look at more uh, micro um, on the product level, uh, whereas the uh, CEO will look at the more macro and pan to China level. Jason, thank you for your comments. They've been very valuable in understanding aspects of knowledge management.